Welcome to part two of the electric drift trike build. As you probably know, in this video, I'm going to be building the battery pack. What I have here is a box of modem battery packs that I bought on eBay. Each of these packs contains three LG18650 cells, each rated at 2600 milliamp hours. In total, there are 99 cells here. The listing claimed that these cells were testing at around full capacity. The seller tested 2000 of these cells and here are the results that they got. The tests were based on one cycle and they used these Litokala chargers to determine the capacities. These chargers can hold up to 4 cells at once and have a NOR test mode which charges the batteries up to 4.2 volts and then does a full discharge capacity test down to 2.8 volts and then charges them back up to 4.2 volts. Once the test is finished, it will say end in the bottom left corner and read the milliamp hours in the middle. It will also show you the time that it took to completely discharge the cell. I've already tested about 9 of these cells and I've written the capacities onto them like so. So far the results are looking pretty good, I'm testing the cells at 500 milliamps and it takes about a full day to complete each test. So I bought two of these chargers so I can test the cells as quickly as possible. So I guess now I need to open up each one of these packs and hope that all 99 cells are usable. Okay, so out of all 99 cells, six of the cells weren't usable, which is actually pretty good considering the price that I paid for all the cells. Uh, unfortunately, I was planning on using 98 cells for my battery pack, so I think I ordered about eight more cells on eBay. I'll put the link to the seller's page in the video description. So my battery is gonna be 52 volts and about 18 amp hours. If you're not really familiar with lithium batteries or making your own lithium battery pack, I highly recommend checking out this book DIY Lithium Batteries by Micah Toll. You might also know Micah from his YouTube page, ebikeschool.com. Between the content that's shown on his YouTube channel and what's shown in this book, I was able to learn everything I need to know to build my own lithium battery pack. So if you're serious about building your own battery pack rather than buying one, I highly recommend checking this out. Anyways, back to the build. After my new cells arrived in the mail, I arranged the batteries in the 14 groups of 7, making sure to even out the capacities of each parallel group as closely as I could. Quite often you see people spot weld or even solder their cells together with nickel strip. I didn't want to purchase an expensive spot welder just to make this battery, so I purchased a couple of these Ruse End battery kits. These kits consist of red and blue bricks that slide onto the cells and just snap together like Lego. They also come with these stainless steel bars that make the connections between one battery to another. The only tool that you need is a socket driver for the nuts, which makes this easy for anybody to do. I used my Dremel to remove some of the old spot welds on each cell to ensure that I end up with good connections. The red caps slide onto the positive end of each cell, and the blue caps slide onto the negative ends. I started by assembling the cells into 14 rows of 7, making sure to alternate each row from positive to negative. This will allow me to make my series connections later on. The next thing that I did was lay the steel strips across each parallel group, and then started making all the series connections after that. It's important that you go slow during this step so you don't accidentally short out any of the cells. Once I was finished one side, I flipped the battery over and did the same thing on the other side, this time starting the series connections at the first cell group. Once it was finished, I measured the battery's voltage to confirm that everything was connected correctly. Now that my battery is all assembled, I can go ahead and add my battery management system, also known as a BMS. A BMS is used to protect your battery during charging and discharging. During charging, the BMS will monitor the voltage of all your cells and balance the cell groups to ensure they are charged equally. During discharging, the BMS will monitor the voltage of all the cells, as well as the entire pack voltage and the discharge current. If the BMS determines that any of its preset limits have been passed, such as the battery draining too low, or an unsafe amount of current being pulled from the battery, the BMS will cut power to the battery to protect it from damage. When choosing a BMS, you need to know how much current your speed controller is going to pull from the battery. My speed controller is a 40 amp controller, so I had to make sure my BMS was rated for at least 40 amps. You also need to make sure your BMS always matches the number of cells that your battery has. 
For example, I have a 14S battery, which is why I went with a 14S PMS. All right, so that's it for the battery pack. To charge it, I purchased this 52 volt three amp charger. If this battery is completely drained, I think it'll take six hours or slightly longer to get it back to a full charge. And I got this foam board that I think I'm gonna zip tie to the top and bottom of the battery pack later on to protect it from vibrations. And then I'll figure out a way to fasten it into the component box. I'll put some more information on this battery pack as well as all the purchase links to the parts in the video description. Anyways, let's go see if it works. Okay, so I connected my speed controller to the motor and I have my throttle connected as well. Just gonna plug in the battery here. All right, here we go. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I think that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, make sure you stay tuned for part three where I actually get this thing working. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.